This one was another case of the no, no score blues as I you know, teased out uh, ahead of the ad break. And we continue the XG trend, but when will this trend end in terms of actually putting said potential goals in the back of the net? Um, First half, we had 10 shots, mustered up 0.98 XG. Only two of them were on target. That kind of goes back to, you know, the, the beginning stats, right? I think we only had two on target all match. And uh, the biggest one of the first half ended up being that Cole Palmer little nice uh, line breaking pass. Kukurela making the the back post run across the the center backs, and what a ball. Uh, yeah, what a ball. just just couldn't finish it from there. But like Nick, the fact is from the first half that was like the standout chance. I think there are definitely some others as you can muster up and see, but like it. We we probably could have assumed that they were gonna defend like hell. They're missing Ivan Tony. They've got some issues on their end. They want to use their height and make it tough to break down. And and that's exactly what we got from the Brentford side. I mean, we know about this because Dan and, and Sam did a wonderful preview. But I mean, these guys are one of the better defenses in the Premier League. It's not to say that they can't be scored against because of course they can be. Uh, and typically they are like the the avalanche sort of defense. You score against them once, they have to come out a little bit more. You can score against them again. But unlocking that first uh, goal is really, really difficult because they defend really compactly. They don't leave a whole lot of space in the middle. And so all the kind of floating in and kind of runs through the middle were going nowhere. And, I, you know, despite that, I thought the first 20 minutes were really, really good football from Chelsea. Um, you know, I thought we were bold. We were daring. We were playing passes that they weren't expecting. You know, I thought Cole Palmer, Matawake, and Sterling had some really good interchange. Jackson just got lost in this game. Didn't do a whole lot, unfortunately. Um, couldn't really figure out how to get on the same page with any of those three players. And that's unfortunate for a lot of reasons, but... The Matawake chance where he hits the corner uh, of the post in a crossbar. You just wonder if that goes in what happens in this match, because it would have been such a banger. The bridge would have been lifted uh, to a level that, you know, I, I don't know if we would have seen since, you know, maybe the, the Mudra chance last week against Arsenal. Uh, you just wonder, it, you know, if, if things go a little bit differently in those sorts of moments, what what really happens. But the Kukurea chance stand for me is the one like you have to be able to put that either side of the goalkeeper. He's standing right in the middle of the goal and you hit it right at him and good teams put those chances away. Yeah, I guess, you know, as much as I like want to point at Kukurea and be like, hey, like I think there's two problems with that one. Why does Kukurea have the highest like contribution across two shots in terms of like the total expected goals? Like that's a problem. Um, I I, I don't want to be relying upon the left back to go be the individual to win us the game when you have Jackson, Palmer, Sterling, uh, and Matawake all out there who should be the individuals who are more responsible for. And like you look at their combinations and what they were kind of putting together, like all of the shots for all the shots we have, the shots are not good shots. They are not high quality shots that would lead to or likely lead to a goal. If I could counter that point, I think the reason that it had space is because they were doing a weird mix to me. It looked like, and again, I, you know, if, if someone has a better tactical eye and wants to correct me, please feel free it looked like they were doing a weird mix of kind of like half man marking on the wings and then like kind of zoning the middle a little bit and just kind of passing Jackson through because he was just not making the right run at any point. And when you do that, it leaves opportunities for the players that you don't expect like Kukurea to make those runs kind of uh, uninterrupted. And I think that's the reason why he was able to get forward and get through not only on this occasion, but once in the second half as well. Um, and, you know, again, I agree with you. Kukure is not our striker. We shouldn't rely on him for goals. But when uh, the opposition has some of your other players locked up and Cole Palmer is basically floating the entire width of the field to try and get the ball, I think that's the reason why you saw Kukure able to break through and get forward as much as he did. It was unfortunate that Disasi was playing right back because there was really no threat coming from the other side. And I think it became predictable over time. That's just my thought on that. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with the predictability element of it. And I, I do think that when 
the way Brentford set up to frustrate the attack meant that you were potentially hoping a player outside of the traditional traditional set might contribute at a at a higher level. I just think my my thought would have been that you would have seen maybe a little more from Gallagher, a little more from Palmer in the positions that they were potentially getting in and even Sterling. I mean Sterling to have you know, two total shots over the entire game, one in that first half felt really interesting, um, Brandon. But I mean, in general, like it, it ties to what Pochettino said, like post-match that like, this is just about the the fact that we're not clinical with the shots that we're taking. And even if we have a ton of volume, if the shots aren't good shots, like you're also not setting yourself up to be the beneficiary of a deflection and angle, um, a rebound that goes in the right way that you're hoping for a little bit of that luck in addition to the shot being of a, of a higher quality. We've got the shots, right? The volume is there kind of to everyone's point. We're just really poor. We're in the bottom five of shots on target percentage. We're at 30% at the top of the tables, Newcastle 42% at the bottom is Luton town at 16.8%. <laughs> they will never score again unless it's a penalty. <laughs> Uh, but United I mean, they are scored this weekend. Uh, right. I know. Point stands. <laughs> United are below us, barely. Liverpool are second from the bottom. Isn't that fascinating that they take so many shots, but like so few are on target? They clearly are playing a volume game where they are just going to overwhelm teams with shots from everywhere. And clearly they're doing a good job. I, I would have assumed that they were clinical, but you know, that's just really not the way it is. Um, They've got 18 goals off of it, though. We're sitting at 12 goals right now. Our, uh, where it all breaks down is also like shot created department. Like we actually lead the league in for like take ons. And Raheem Sterling's had a couple of fantastic games. Mudrick as well. They're stacking that. But like once we get into the final third, we had a good run of Raheem making some good decisions. No, missed that yesterday. Yeah. Nico Jackson, not really providing anything. It, the players that you want, it's just back to the roller coaster. Oh, Nico Jackson has a game. Now he's quiet. Oh, Raheem Sterling has two great games. And now he's quiet. The inability for like the consistency to be there. Or if, hey, Sterling can have a quiet game, that's fine. But like, we need someone else to fill that gap and stuff up. And to Dan, to your point, if it's Cole Palmer or it's, you know, Connor Gallagher, who I think, you know, I would put more responsibility on Cole because Connor's doing a lot more of the extra uh, curricular activities in the midfield than so Cole doesn't have to. But like, we need some ability to to score goals. And I saw a tweet out there, you know, Nico Jackson really isn't that guy yet. He needs time to adapt and develop. So then my question is whether it's to the club or to Potch, Nick, is, what was the plan? Was the plan all in Kunku? Was it all on his shoulders to say that he's the missing piece? Because the squad that we have assembled is sorely lacking in goals. And I think if I were to Monday morning quarterback this, was did we really need lobby or could we put another 60 million into another attacking player? But Cole did come in at the last day of the window, looks promising. Maybe you just still need some time. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious that was their plan and it got unfoiled in the last preseason game. Um, and again, it it begs, you know, you, you can kind of like go all the way back in time and <laughs> think about all this sort of stuff, right? Why are you playing him on a terrible pitch in Chicago when you know he's going to be your goal scorer this year? You know, I think that's a phenomenal question to ask somebody. Regardless, we should be able to score goals against Brentford. Um, we should be able to score goals, period. Like I go back to the the one chance that really, really bothered me yesterday that we missed was not the Kukurea chance. It was with Sterling in acres of space on the right, puts it 40 yards over the goal as if he had never shot at goal before, which we know, of course, is not the case. Why? He, he's been good recently. Why, why do you lose that much confidence? Goalkeepers kind of near post. All you have to do is slot at far post and you have a goal. Like it, it's it's stuff like that that really baffles me. Just like the the panic like in front of goals. The only way I can describe it, Dan, that the team just gets so 
angsty in front of goal because they're they're so desperate for stuff to happen that they blaze it 40 yards over. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the desperation or it's more the the frustration or feeling as if there's not necessarily an outlet there. There's not necessarily the person to pass to. There's not a confidence player who's going to take the volume of shots. Like when you have so many players who are willing to lay it up or tee it up to the next individual, to the next individual. Like we have someone in Cole Palmer who is very happy to step up and be the person to be accountable and take penalties, which is great. I'm glad we have someone on our team who is uh, confident in taking penalties and taking charge on penalties. But the fact that we don't have that individual who says like, Hey, I'm going to be the person who is going to be the scorer who is going to help bring the team forward. And I'm going to be accountable to that is a problem for Potch. It's a problem for the team. And it's a problem for the the results that we, we've run into. Like, even though we have some good underlying stats, like the, the challenge of not having a player who can execute like that, I think is why we see so many articles still, so many conversations with Naz or Matt or others about Chelsea not ruling out going after a striker in January because goals still continue to, to be the problem brandon for this team so well, i want to give a because i think a lot of times we really really focus on the end result which i absolutely am leading that charge right now i'm so annoyed that like we lost two nothing to jv brentford who don't have their star man tony and we just like played into their hand and i know a couple things are forced we'll talk on that in the next situation but gentlemen them that we have it should be an exciting team Right, We have the most progressive distance passes and the most take-ons in the league. Right, We are more progressive than any other team in the league in terms of the style that we play. Now, I will absolutely say yesterday probably curved those numbers. But from even like a short and a medium pass area, you think of like Taka or other teams that high possess, we have the most short completions and attempts and the most media and we're the third in medium completions and second in the attempts and even long we're the most completed like chelsea own games we dominate short medium passes mean we are controlling where the ball is going not just hoofing it and running after it we have a, a fantastic g that says hey this team we're clicking we would be a lot better, right? We're, we're in the top five on that standpoint. 18.2 knocking on the doors. Recently, Brentford's at 19, so there's some fun perspective. But, like, this is a fun team the way we are set up. We are progressive. We are no Jorginho passing sideways and backwards front. This team looks to go forward, but we are woeful when it comes to that, that final action, that final pass. And that's what's really letting us down this season. But I think if you are to take, strip that away, Potch isn't the problem, and we're seeing that nonsense again. The Potch talk, I, you're missing it. Look at the numbers. Look at the style. Oh, the eye test. People, people are swinging and a miss on this. A couple tweaks, a couple people healthy consistently. Maybe one upgrade in January. This, this is a different team. We are flying. I, I mean, if I, if I could though, like I think. I think there was some naivete and in what we did yesterday. Um, we knew what Brentford was going to do, right? Low block, hit and hope, right? That That's their style. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that style. This is not me chastising that style. Chelsea have won plenty of games in our history playing that style of football. Um, but you, you knew what it was going to be. Brentford weren't going to come out and ticky-taka and bring it forward but if you think of the way that we've played over the last five weeks and how much better we've looked when we've had 50 percent of the possession instead of 70 percent of the possession right my, my point online after this although cure doyle tried to slap me down immediately for saying such a bold thing was make them come out make them have the ball a little bit more right and the only reason i say this is just of course they are really good at getting back and keeping their shape. There can be no denying that. I'm not saying that them having the ball is going to automatically make their whole defense fall apart or anything like that. Of course not. But if they are made to play with the ball and Chelsea are able to sit back and you win the battle in the midfield instead of right in front of their 18-yard box where they already have the wall set up, perhaps there's going to be more space for your players to play within, 
um, instead of entering the, you know, forest of tall trees. So th- this is my my point is when Chelsea have played teams that want the ball, we look a lot better. We look like we're able to counter very quickly, pass the ball more effectively, have a lot more room in the final third. We still have not figured out how to play teams like this to effectively unlock teams like this. And I think that is a little naive from Poch to go out there and try and have 78% possession and think that that's going to win you the game. Additionally, our set pieces are fucking woeful. You cannot, cannot, cannot have a set piece where Robert Sanchez comes up and not have a single person able to receive the ball and head it towards frame or head it out so that he can get back. And additionally, you sh- you have to have one person <laughs> back to stop their inevitable counterattack. Like, these are very, very basic principles that I'm saying out loud right now. They might not make sense to anyone. You might not agree with any of them, and that is totally fine. But that is, if I had a criticism of yesterday's game plan, it's that. I, I would say on the possession, <clears throat> like, Podge didn't get to dictate that he wanted that much. Brentford gave it to us. But your point, Nick were we prepared knowing that we probably were going to have a controlling amount of possession, they were going to be deep. What was that game plan? 